Hey guys, Chad Van Herp here, personal trainer with Roadrunner Sports, and today we're dealing with an issue that I've dealt with myself, and as runners, I'm sure a lot of you have dealt with it in the past, or you're gonna deal with it in the future, again, with a lot of the injuries that we cover here, that's the case, and that's why we're getting to the bottom of it. And the issue we're gonna to tackle today is shin splints. Um, it was brought to my attention today by a client this week that I had, and it was something I thought that a lot of you could benefit from too. So we're gonna go through a couple different scenarios here. I'm gonna teach you how to actually identify if it's a shin splint issue or if it's a stress fracture. And then we're gonna deal with some uh, modalities to actually try to get you out of pain and get you back on the road running the way you should be. All right, you guys. So first we're gonna start off by identifying the tissues and the structures involved in shin splints or, or a stress fracture issue. And really what we're dealing with is the ankle joint and these two main muscle groups, you've got your tibialis anterior, which is basically this shin muscle that runs up the front, right? That's the anterior portion. And then we've got tibialis posterior that runs on the medial aspect of the tibia. This purple line is used to kind of represent the tibia or your shin bone. So you can kind of see where these two different muscle groups are attaching. Now really, if you've got pain right here on that lateral aspect or really on the front of your shin, you're dealing with the tibialis anterior shin splint. If you're here in the tibialis posterior, or that medial aspect, again, that's gonna be tibialis posterior, okay? And so if you've got a radiating pain up and down this medial aspect of the shin or the tibia or out here in front, you're most likely dealing with shin splints, okay? The, the fact is, you'll know if it's a shin splint versus a stress fracture because, like I said, the pain will be radiating in a shin splint. It'll be kind of running down the length of the muscle and down into where the tendons attach into the foot and ankle. Okay, if we're dealing with a stress fracture, we're dealing with very pinpoint pain because that's gonna be a small fracture in the bone. It's not gonna radiate up and down the muscle and down into the tendon. It's gonna be very pinpoint where that bone has actually created a little bit of a fracture from the repetitive stresses. Okay, so now you kinda know what, what structures we're dealing with. Now let me show you really what's involved and why that happens and We've talked about it in previous videos, the importance of midfoot striking or even forefoot striking. And in my opinion, that's gonna save you from this issue because really what's happening here is if you're a heel striker and you're striding weight out and you're landing on that heel, well that tibialis anterior here is responsible for this dorsiflex position of the foot. Now each time that you step out here on that heel, now you've gotta eccentrically control that foot on the way down so it can come through and toe off. Now what that's doing is taking this tibialis anterior from a very contracted, tight position and then forcing these rapid stretches over and over for a period of, of hundreds of steps over the course of miles. So, you know, hundreds of thousands of steps. So you can see where that breakdown can take place. Okay, so the other issue is with that tibialis posterior, that's gonna be a different issue altogether. And that's oftentimes where that foot's collapsing in and over pronating and putting a stretch. You can see if this ankle rolls in, this muscle's gonna get stretched and that tendon's gonna get stretched over and over, eventually creating inflammation and lots of pain. And what happens is these muscles actually start to pull away from the bone slightly and they create fluid filled pockets between the bone and the muscle that swell up and instead of the body really flushing them out and clearing it out, clearing the inflammation and getting you better, they tend to just stick around unless you do something about it. Okay, so um, one more point just to differentiate, differentiate between shin splints and stress fractures is one other little tip. A stress fracture is gonna feel better in the morning, okay? If you feel like you're not having a lot of pain in the mornings, but as the day wears on, you start to experience a lot of pain, that's gonna be a signal that that's gonna be a stress fracture instead of a shin splint. Usually at night when the muscles tighten up, you're gonna feel those shin splints right away because you're dealing with those muscles being tight and trying to pull away from the bone as you start to first get moving, okay? So now we're gonna kinda of go into the protocol as far as recovering from these injuries and what you should do about it. All right, so first things first, if you're dealing with shin splints or a stress fracture for that matter, you're gonna to need to rest. First and foremost, no amount of exercise or stretching or strengthening is gonna help you if you're not resting the area. You've gotta give it time to recover, allow that tissue to heal, allow the inflammation to move out of there. 
That being said, we can help that process along. Okay, like I said, so rest anywhere from one to two weeks is ideal. You wanna give your body ample time to actually recover. The second thing that you're gonna to try to do is make sure that you're icing and really trying to help that inflammation or that inflammatory process along by cooling the area and helping with that recovery. Okay, so the third thing that we really wanna do is we wanna deal with the tissue length itself. A lot of times those muscles are shortened and tight. They don't have the suppleness that they need to absorb the forces that you're putting on them. So what we wanna do is create some length in the muscle. We wanna create a more supple muscle that's able to stretch and withstand the forces that you're putting on it. Okay, one way we can do that is with a foam roller. Okay, and I'm gonna go through another option afterwards that doesn't use a foam roller for any of you that do not have access to this, but I think this is a really easy one that you can do and, and in my opinion is very effective. And all you're gonna do is get down into this kneeling position, and again with that tibialis anterior being here right on the front of the shin, all you're gonna do is put the shin right on top of the foam roller, and you're gonna disperse some pressure into your hands so you're not putting your full body weight on it. Because again, if it's injured, it's gonna be tender, it's gonna be sore. You're not gonna to wanna to put your full weight on it. But you're gonna just roll up and down, okay? And you're gonna to try to cover the length of your entire shin or that tibia bone, because remember that muscle's running all up and down the length of it and crossing the ankle. And I can tell you right now, I don't have shin splints, but this is very tight for me, it's very tender. Okay, so rolling back and forth. After about a couple minutes, you should already start to feel a little bit of relief there. Okay, and this third little tool or this third little uh, part of the series that we're gonna do to cure the pain here is gonna also come with a stretch and a strengthening exercise. And it's gonna be very easy to move from one to the next. This doesn't take much effort or time at all. So once you're done rolling and you've got a little, little relief, an easy stretch is just right here. You just fold the feet over, sit back into your knees, sit back onto your heels, and now you've got that ankle down in a plantar flex position, which is gonna put a nice stretch across that tibialis anterior that we just loosened up with the foam roller. So it's kind of a one-two approach. Okay, once you've done that, you can work on trying to strengthen the muscles so that these injuries aren't happening in the future. And again, very easy option for you here. This is how you take care of it is with no equipment necessary, you're just simply doing a heel walk. And so what you're gonna do is get yourself into a dorsiflex position through the ankle, and you're just gonna try to take steps forward without letting those toes fall to the ground. So it's just these little steps, trying to stay up on the heels, really keep those toes pulled back, and you're gonna walk about 20 steps one way, 20 steps the other, repeat it for three sets, and you're gonna find that the integrity and strength of those tissues adapt very quickly, and hopefully you won't have to deal with the anterior tibialis uh, shin splints in the future. Okay, now we're, now we're talking about uh, releasing the posterior tibialis, and again, that's gonna be on the medial side of the tibia. It's a little harder to get to, so the easiest place to get to it or easiest position to get to it is in this kind of pigeon pose. And all you wanna do is find a ball, right? You can use a golf ball, it's a little smaller, it's a little more pinpoint but something typically the size of a baseball with a nice firmness and hardness to it is gonna be best. And you're just gonna apply some pressure right into that tibia and you're gonna roll right down the side of it. And I can tell you up high for me, that feels fine. But as I come down lower, you're gonna really start to feel some tenderness because that's where that muscle belly kind of turns into tendon. It rolls all the way down across the ankle and crosses the ankle attaches to the foot. So again, if you wanna release that muscle, you're just trying to give some nice pressure through here. Get that muscle to release since it's being overused and try to create that suppleness we talked about so you're not experiencing these injuries in the future. All right, so there you guys have it. We've got a few different options for you, a few different techniques for you to get out of pain with your shin splints. Again, this is a very common injury and it's something that's gonna really take the wind out of your sails, whether you're a new runner or a, an expert runner that's just starting to deal with this. Again, going from being pain-free, loving your runs, to now feeling like you've got a knife being stabbed into your shin. So I hope you found these tools useful. I really want you guys to be able to continue what you're doing, continue on your fitness journey, your competitive runs, everything that you wanna do under the sun, okay? I don't want anything to hold you back. So, there you have it, again, Stay tuned to us. We're gonna come at you each week, every week, with a new topic, something that's hopefully gonna to be very helpful to you. As always, click the like button, 
Leave comments and questions below, things that you want us to cover, and we'll be sure to do so in the upcoming weeks. Thanks for tuning in. You guys stay happy, healthy, and we'll see you out on the roads.